Hi, it's Paul Bayless with GreatDad.com, and uh, I'm here with Pete Armstrong. We're going to have a conversation about uh, about coaching and positive intelligence today. If you don't know GreatDad.com, it's a resource for fathers because dads don't always think like moms, and it's important for dads to get uh, supported in any way we we can to provide uh, better better experiences for our families and and uh, and our kids. And I'm always uh, gr- I'm always grateful for the opportunity to talk to another another father about experiences especially since my my kids are a little bit older Pete's uh, are a little bit younger but he's obviously a lot younger than I am and I'd love to see the way that uh, father's roles are evolving as we uh, you know get deeper into this new uh, new century so um, Pete uh, welcome you your work you've been doing some uh, positive intelligence coaching you started your coaching journey a little bit earlier than I did in 2018 so you've got some things that you can teach me here but I want to first of all welcome you to the welcome you to the podcast Thank you, Paul. It's a privilege. Thank you. Yeah. So I want to hear about your your experience, first of all, of, of, about coaching, and then we'll talk about how positive intelligence uh, has added on to, to your skills and why you, you think it's the, in your words, really now a key part of your coaching uh, tool, toolkit. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, I am... Um... I have been, um, I started my little coaching practice in fall of 2018, but it was was a bit of a side hustle. And I was working with a couple of professional men. Didn't really know what I wanted to do. I just knew that coaching was awesome as it changed my life. And uh, I decided then to take a management position. And I put my coaching side hustle to the the side, Um, side hustle to the side. (laughs) And went on the back burner. Um, But then I took positive intelligence in, uh, which my life coach recommended back in the uh, fall of 2020 and positive intelligence. I'll say it, it saved my life. It changed my life forever uh, from a positive standpoint. I just, it really helped me with my mindset. It helped me um, understand the judge and how it was controlling my life. And I think the power of empathy is real because I felt like the power of empathy for me and my experience, it was the gateway to forgiveness. And when I was able to forgive myself for some of the things in the past, I was able to grow in self-love. And really, my own experience, I saw it with my children more than anything. My, my relationship with my kids significantly improved. I was more patient. I was less judgmental. I realized my controller saboteur was getting in the way of me connecting with the kids and the stress that I had. Um, so I just, I couldn't believe how significantly different life was after PQ and really it it helped me be a better dad. Yeah. It it literally helped me be a better dad. Yeah. I I want to stop you there on the, the change my life perspective. You know, both of us are, are uh, Midwesterners. So we come with a certain cynicism. I'm, I, I would guess that you share that with me. I don't, I live in California now, but all that, all the hoo hoo stuff is a little, a little bit hard for me to deal with. And I struggle with that even in coaching. I don't like the word coach, for example. I find that a little bit, a little bit goofy. Um, but when it comes to positive intelligence, the thing that blows me away is so many men that I've talked to use those exact words, uh, transformational, change my life. Uh, uh, don't know how I, you know, existed without it. Uh, to fundamentally change my perspective on things. And if I were listening to this as somebody who just came to a cold, I'd be like, oh yeah, I've heard this from, Est and a billion other things, but the difference with positive intelligence, and I, I'd love to hear your how you've related to the you know the the, the 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 science behind it is that it does have all these underpinnings in stuff that like when Est was created, whatever that was, 30, 40 years ago, back when I was you know twenty in my twenties, there wasn't any real underpinnings to that. It was a philosophy, and some of it matches what we do in positive intelligence, and some of it is common sense, but there's so much more that we know now in terms of neuroscience and and brain plasticity, performance science, all these underpinnings of of positive intelligence that now the culture takes for granted, but make this really a real program. So uh, tell me about your, how you, you know, went through that learning process and how you kind of discovered how it really changed your life. Yeah. You know, it's funny, Paul, is I, uh, I feel like I need to sit down and write it all out. Yeah, I do, so that. That I can be- I do that with many of the things. When so I can better articulate it with my clients and people because 
you're right. You, you, you kind of say like, oh, sure. This has changed, changed my life. And I call it, I call it fluffy. Like when I talk about some of these things, I know it sounds fluffy, but really. Yeah, right. And I think that the gist is that I love how positive intelligence realizes, realizes and emphasizes the primal forces of love and fear. And both of those are, cannot live together. Right. And for me, I realized anytime that I was struggling with a stress or anxiety or depression or anger, anything of that nature, I finally was able to realize through positive intelligence, like that's a fear-based thought. Mm -hmm. And that, if I have that mindset or that momentum or whatever motivation, I realize, wait a minute, that's when I don't connect with my kids. Yeah. Oh yeah. You, that's, were, you were able to draw the connection directly. Like I was hundred percent. Like I, I would, you know, whether it was, uh, or if I was judging them or I even noticed when I was judging myself, like when I was, that voice was, the judge was strong in my head. I was able to connect like, Whoa, that's when I take out on other people. Yeah. So really the gist is, and then, and then I realized love when we do shift into the space in our mind where we can access empathy and compassion, I was like, whoa, this actually works. And I was able to realize when I could have empathy for myself, I now could have empathy for my children or for others. And to me, empathy and this self-love, the more we can have that as, as fathers, the more we can give it to our kids. We can only give give what we have. Yeah. And I believe positive intelligence helps men through the program develop this strong sense of self empathy, which most men, they probably know what the word empathy means. <laughs> and I don't think I fully resonated with it, but the gist is, is loving yourself and understanding like it's, what is it like to, what is it, what is it to like to be yourself? When you, when you struggle with these things, it's like, take care of yourself so that you can take care of your children and raise them the way you'd want to. And I think that's the gist is this fear and love concept. And then the beauty to me is the daily practice of the exercises for your mind, I think helps me reduce my stress every day, which again, helps me connect. Yep. Well, you've kind of got through the whole arc of the, of the program there from the the interruption of the thoughts. I mean, that, that, that to me, I think is, a, is such a eye opener in the first uh, two weeks of the six weeks, pro six week program is, is when working with men and dads is this, you know, they, the, people are kind of aware that they got this inner critic and some of these voices for some people, it's a cacophony. It's like so overbearing that they like, you know, they almost feel like the, the, they're schizophrenic. Like the voices are so loud, but putting a, putting a name to that as the judge or the inner critic or the saboteurs really seems to help men uh, identify that that is going on. And that, like you say, is the first step. And just, I loved your example with the, with the kids is that if you're judging the situation you know, crappy meal my wife just made, or or you're 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 judging their performance at school ra rather than listening. You're not in the moment in those relationships. You're you're judging. You're ruining the opportunity for getting closer to your family by letting those voices overpower you. And I think the rational thing is you're you're thinking, oh, these are rational thoughts. These are things that are that are uh, that are appropriate. But they're helping the learn, kids. Yeah. <laughs> once you learn that they are, yeah, they're appropriate for sending a signal. Okay. White's a lousy cook. Maybe she shouldn't be doing, uh, you know, cooking school or anything, or <laughs> the kids have grading problems. Yeah. These are real things. But if you let them dominate your, your whole mindset for the moment, you're missing out on an opportunity to, to connect instead of just using them as signals. Yeah. And, and, and here's the thing, you know, my faith is important to me, but we are created for relationship. Mm -hmm. It's our primary need, you know? And for me, I've always yearned since I can remember for this deeply intimate relationship with somebody, like to be connected, to have that, that just, I, I've loved a relationship, love my friends, my siblings, you know, and I've had some broken ones in the past. Mm -hmm. 
And I think positive intelligence helps us understand what is required for us if we really want to have a deeply meaningful, Mm -hmm. loving relationship. And I think for us, I think what positive intelligence does, it it helps us work on the things that are in the way, (laughs) like fear. Yeah. Well, I like, I'm glad you brought up faith because I'm personally, I'm not somebody who is a, uh, I don't know what the, I'm not faithless, but I'm a faithless person. <laughs> I'm sure. an agnostic person, Agnostic, but I, yeah. I, but I, but there's, there's so many things in Christianity and all the rest of the religions that are, that are really central to the same message. I, I've been, um, really getting into the, uh, the Stoics, you know, the daily, uh, mm. daily Stoic journal and a lot of the philosophy from ancient Greek philosophy, especially with the, the Epicureans and the Stoics is just right in the center of positive intelligence. These are the, the things that we do in positive intelligence are not brand new. Shirzad Charmaine is not, he's not the Messiah. He's not the, no. he didn't invent this out of whole cloth. He put it together a bunch of science and he put together a lot of the things that uh, people practice every day in, in Christianity and other faiths, which is uh, some part of it, meditation and uh, under, uh, empathy, huge part of Christianity, if, if you practice it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's, 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 it's practicing these things, like you say. Mm, that's it. That right there, that word, practice. Yeah. That's to me, if you're agnostic, Christian, whatever you are, I think, I mean, this is, this is like this, this program makes me be a better Christian. Yeah. Because it's the practice. Yeah. It's the tangible meditations. It's the tangible um, embracing the body experience, you know, and stuff of that nature and the the love and fear. I mean, it's in the Bible. There's, there's I think it's in John where they're, you know, John talks about there's, there's no fear in love. Mm. Perfect love. There is no fear. Yeah. And right. It, it makes sense, but we don't, I don't think, especially men as fathers, who's taught us this, who's told us this, yeah. how do we understand it? How do we know what's in the way of us connecting with our children or being a good father? Or how do we know the beautiful, we think we're doing the right thing. We're providing for our family, but really, do you really know that maybe you're not doing the best thing for your kids? You know, like we think, you know, our, our criticism of our children is to, to make sure that they're moving on the right path, but maybe they don't need that. Maybe they just need empathy. Yeah. Maybe they just need you to sit down and, and listen. Yeah. And men aren't, men are problem solvers, right? Yeah. The hammer, the hammer, the screwdriver. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, sometimes as Shazad says, you need a paintbrush. Well, I th- that's, you know, that's part of coaching. I think it may, and maybe it's more difficult for us. I don't know when women, women seem to struggle with it too. in my, my coaching uh, training experience with this whole idea of coaching is not, is not is not mentoring. It's not advice giving. It's not consulting. And as you say, we, we're more men are more wired to say, do it this way. <laughs> but our responsibility as coaches is is more people to to awaken them to the possibilities. In in CTI coactive training, uh, we we say every person is uh, resourceful, uh, uh, creative, and whole. And, whole. and uh, it's you know it starts with with you. You have to make those changes. Uh, and you have to find this, your own solutions that work for you. I can't tell you to be, I can't tell Pete Armstrong how to be Pete Armstrong. Pete Armstrong's got to, got to figure that out. I can help guide you, but, uh, not going to give you the answers, unfortunately. Sure. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about how, uh, about the structure of the program, uh, just so people understand how it works. Cause it's, it's six weeks and it's meant to be uh, it's meant to be an intro to positive intelligence and an intro to, a, like you say, a lifelong practice. So we start out with uh, with helping people understand when their judge is becoming active. And we have a conversation about that. And for a lot of people, that's eye-opening. And then we we shift into what those saboteurs are who live with, within you and uh, try to bring bring that understanding out because people have some, you know, some number of saboteurs that are in you, the, the, the stickler, the hyperachiever, the hypervigilant, there, there are nine of them or 12 of them. I always forget. Uh, there are a lot of, a lot of those, there are a lot. Nine? Of them. Yeah. <laughs> we have, a, we have a chart somewhere, um, uh, but uh, they all play a role, that, but they don't define you. And that, I think that's the really important thing for clients going through the 
the program is that you're not defined negatively by those those saboteurs. They all play a role. They're they're very helpful, and sometimes they're very productive. They may even be the key to all of your success, but they're also can be the key to how you're maybe overdoing it on those. Mm -hmm. And then we yeah. then we explore ways to figure out solutions and more positive. Uh, reactions to daily challenges using what are called the sage powers. Again, kind of goofy language, mm -hmm. but it gets down, gets into some of the things that we're talking about empathy, especially as being one of the, one of the, the superpowers mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. relationships. So how, how, is, how have your, do you have any anecdotes of how your, the men who've gone through the program with you have reacted to these different stages? Yeah, I think what how men are finding value in this program is one of my clients is uh, he has a high stickler and high restless. And stickler I got the uh, is it, yeah, so the, in the, and so the stickler right is this perfectionist like everything has to be perfect and it's not perfect, right? It, they're going to keep going until it's perfect, and that gets in the way of a relationship because you know if there's one sock on the ground that your son didn't pick up that sock. <laughs> Guess what? Yeah. The son could have could have cleaned yeah. his room and felt right. he did a great right. job. Ruined and then the he day. says, Oh, you forgot that sock. <laughs> and guess what? Now that's now that relationship is broken. And he what he's finding is this 80% rule that we, we suggest for the sticklers. It's like 80% is okay. Yeah. Or harmony. Go for harmony. And so I think for that's one example of how one of my clients is is using it in his parenting is that around the house and stuff of that nature, try not to be this, let the stickler show up. In addition, the restless, uh, he's a, he, he's a business owner. He has three businesses and he's does very well, but it's very easy for him to constantly finding something to do. Yeah. And obviously we only have so much time in the day and we only have so much emotional capacity. Well, what he's realizing is that restless saboteur is taking away from his intimacy with his children, not only from like a time standpoint, but also from this emotional connection because he's done, he's spent throughout the day because he's doing this, this, that, and this other thing. And then now when it's time to be with the kids and what if there's a problem? Well, he doesn't have the emotional capacity to handle it. Yeah. Now he realizes, Ooh, my restless is trying to tell me to go do A, B, and C. And he's now able to tell himself to not do that. Wow. So that's just... Two examples of somebody that has a high restless and high uh, stickler and what they're doing to really be a better father. Yeah. I've uh, had a bunch of dads go through the program and I, from what I can tell, they've, they've been better at home, but uh, a lot of them with uh, hyperachiever saboteurs, which manifests itself in, in yelling, uh, mm. you know, being in, in business, being business leaders, being fairly successful uh, managerial types, but the way they've always managed is just to scream and yell all the time and perfectly nice people, you know, but, uh, but the, in, at least in the way in their telling, they yell all the time and mm. just understanding that they're doing that. And that's might not be the most appropriate response is, uh, is shocking to them. Uh, mm. Well, anecdotally, I, I also, as a father of shovel yelling, and without a doubt, positive. And I have a high hyperachiever, high avoider, and high controller. And I use yelling as a, as a means to uh, get my point across or discipline. Uh, and without a doubt, positive intelligence has significantly reduced the amount and like the intensity of my yelling. Like my, now I might yell, I might have a justifiable anger. Oh yeah. Which is, which is, which is different yeah. than doing it straight out of fear. Because right, even the yelling and that, that, if that's coming from anger, it could be coming from fear, and some of that fear is not it's not necessary, mm -hmm. uh, nor is it effective. From right, and again, if we're designed for a relationship and and love, you're, you're you're again interrupting that connection. That regardless if it's a man or not or a father, we yearn for a connection. Mm -hmm. We yearn for a deeply intimate relationship with our children or even our our coworkers. Uh, or our team and fear can get in the way of that. I think. Yeah. So it, it is interesting. You, 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 uh, you've had some fathers go through the program as fathers, but a lot of them like me have been also, 
they came because of the mental fitness aspect. We kind of market it as mental fitness, though it has this family dynamic component. And as I say, in coaching, almost all coaching, even if it starts out with, you know, uh, management effectiveness it professional yeah, yeah. Comes into the it always comes into the home but it's it's kind of interesting how uh somebody who might do do positive intelligence for the family aspect brings those skills into the workplace it, uh, tell, tell me a little bit about what your experience has been with people in uh in management and how they've used it uh we'll go back to this my one client he uh business owner right i mean he has hundreds of people under him Mm. he has shared uh well, here's two beautiful things one is he said he's more empathetic because he's learned how to be empathetic with himself and then he now he's more empathetic with his team and he's given me he gave me an example the other day uh one of his managers has a lot of anxiety and his manager came in and was just kind of you know discombobulated and typically he, in the past he would be like basically get your SHIT together and let's go. But this t- now, what he did is he actually sat the guy down and talked to him. He said, hey, what's going on? And he was able to empathize with that, with him and realize that this person's struggling. And I, I mean, I got chills when he told me that because I was just, he, he never has done, done that before. Yeah. And um, this is just an example of what this program can offer. And then the, the result, what's the result of that? That person, that manager who was responsible for, 15, 20 people below him, that entire day went phenomenal. And now their relationship, he said he's he's seeing the relationship blossom. Mm-hmm. Just by that one time, that one empathetic conversation. Mm-hmm. So that's one example. Yeah, yeah. So in, in the program, uh, the, we do we we use an app to keep up everybody on track and and there's 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 a video that people watch over the weekend to, to talk about the concepts that we're going to do and we're going to discuss during the week. And the, uh, the other major component is, is what's called group coaching, where we're with a, with a group of the people, it could be men and women, in our case, it's uh, usually all, all men. Um, how have you found those sessions to be? Uh, I, I, you know, I, when I've gotten get guys together, uh, and I like doing all men rather than having women in the group, because it kind of, the, the, the chemistry, I think, changes quite often when men are with women. They trying to they they have a, a tendency to to want to impress the women, I think, or or be a way maybe they aren't when they are with mm. other guys. Of course, being with other guys creates other other dynamics. But what I've been surprised at how willing people have been to uh, maybe first first of all share experiences that are at work, and that's kind of a way into to talking about some of the other the other personal issues. Mm, that what, mm. has that been what you've seen well i would say once so when i this is my experience when i went through positive intelligence uh i did it with three other guys and uh two of the guys uh are dads the other guy is a, a stepfather he doesn't have children of his own but what was interesting is that i invited the guys i was like the, the connector i invited the guys to go to the program together I was going through a divorce and I was like, I needed some support. Mental fitness sounds awesome to me. Yeah. And what I saw, and I was to this day, it brings me joy is like, I'm, I'm a pretty vulnerable guy and emotional. It's just who I am. And I led with that in the program. And because I led with it, they all opened up and they did talk about work, but I would say, if there was a measurement, I would say 90% of the time we talked about fatherhood and marriage. <laughs> and um, I don't think men usually do that in, in such a raw and vulnerable way. I mean, they were saying things that I was surprised some of these guys uh, were saying. For example, one of the guys, I wasn't even going to invite him to join me because I was like, oh, he's he's doing so well. He's wealthy. He's a He's a business owner. He's got his stuff together. He doesn't need this program. Well, I'm sure glad I invited him because it changed his life. One yeah. of the guys. Yeah. So we never know. We never know what men are. Men don't share. You know, men, yeah. men are strong. Yeah. And but I don't want, I, I don't want to, at the same time, I don't want to scare people off uh, out of the of doing it because they think they're going to be forced to be, you know, vulnerable and cry in the, in the group. But, 
but it is a it is an opportunity to to talk about some of these things like you say because men don't necessarily share about some of the challenges and when you're working through you know how to face life's challenges in this program ostensibly to be develop your mental fitness and develop more positive reactions you're clearly going to get into some of those stories of what what are challenges in the day and some of those do get a little you know deeper than maybe we're, we're used to yeah and and you're right paul and I, I agree that it's not like we're sitting here and sobbing with each other but guess what sharing our story yeah really helps you know to, to say paul you know paul tells me he had, he's angry with his kids and he yells at his kids and he does this wrong and then i'm like okay i'm not alone yeah i yeah. do that too <laughs> and yeah, i think not. Yeah. yeah exactly and we, and we want to be on the same path to say hey listen this is where we are we're not happy with that let's let's move together side by side and move towards something better and i think that in itself that that accountability and that partnership serves people well well, that's, that's good. I don't know if you, there are other things you want to add. I really enjoyed having this conversation about positive intelligence and, and its value. It's, it's great to talk to other coaches about how it's being done. Do you, do you have a, a website where people can go to learn more about your services? I assume you do them all over the country. And Yeah, no, not at this point. I don't have a website. I am uh, going a little bit with the prosperous coach uh, method at this point where I'm just building relationships one at a time. And um, so I don't have a website right now, but people can, can email me if they're interested at peteinspires at gmail.com. And I'd be happy to start their relationship with you and see how I can best serve you. That sounds great. I, and I assume you do uh, coaching across the country, not just in, in Wisconsin. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. Uh, majority of it is uh, virtual. Uh, obviously if you're in Madison, uh, there's nothing better than sitting down together, but I do a lot of my uh, coaching virtual or by phone. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and to learn more about uh, my coaching, you can go to greatdad.com or greatdad.com slash PQ to learn more about positive intelligence. I'm also doing a, a tandem coaching with a, another mom coach, and we are doing coaching for moms and dads at the same time, men-led groups on one side and women-led groups on the other with prompts to, to combine that uh, information. And you can learn more at uh, greatdad.com slash PQ about that. We have a special going on for, uh, for Valentine's Day. Um, and I do a weekly webinar on Thursdays at 11 o'clock uh, to talk about positive intelligence. It's only 30, 35 minutes. And you get a free subscription, one-year subscription to read it for me, the, the uh, book summary service for development and management techniques. So I, I, um, I would invite you to come to, to uh, listen to that webinar. And again, those, those details are at greatdad.com slash PQ with a, with a schedule of those. And I appreciate, pr appreciate everybody joining, uh, joining them. So Pete, thanks a lot for taking time. And we will post this uh, on, the, uh, on the Positive Intelligence channel for all the other coaches. And uh, I will see you in the community. All right. Thank you, Paul. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Take care.